Here's something else on this Shohei thing that I've really noticed. And I, I got to admit, I am both bothered by it and also acknowledging of it. I, I, it's honestly, quite frankly, a bigger issue. It's bigger than baseball. It's bigger than Shohei Otani. Um, 888-957-9570. I think a piece of it, a little piece of it, was heard this morning on uh, the Joes. Fonte's out this week. So, the morning Joes? Uh, Spadonuts is hanging out with uh, Wachowski, and uh, they're doing the morning Joe. So these guys are chatting about the same thing you and I are talking about. And I get it. Everybody wants Shohei. I'm sitting here telling you I wouldn't do this. I think it's a bad deal. If the Giants do do it, it's not that I'm not going to be excited the next day. I'll be very, very excited to see Shohei Otani play games in a Giants uniform. I'd also be terrified. I'd be terrified because, again, the napalm is Giants give up five prospects for Shohei, play for 10 weeks, get a wild card spot, get knocked out in the first round, Shohei bolts for the Dodgers. Now you are, you're beaten, you're embarrassed, you're demoralized, and you're up a creek all at once. Okay, so that's what I really, really don't want. But the Joes are sitting there talking about this, and it wasn't about winning the World Series, and it wasn't about the next 10 years. They were both pro Tani, which is our word for if you want to acquire him here in sure. July. As opposed to no hey, Otani. Or just no Tani. Are okay. you no Tani or pro Tani? Okay, I'll okay? allow it. So they're both pro Tani. And they're, the reasoning, the best way for me to sort of describe their reasoning was the Giants need to show their fan base and the rest of baseball that they're like serious, that they're real, that they are one of the teams. And I'm sitting there listening and I'm getting all, you know, all flustered. Shoulders are getting up a little bit because I'm like, that opinion to me is emblematic of an inferiority complex that is going through the San Francisco Bay Area right now. In, well, the Bay Area, I think just the Giants. I in, wouldn't say that. Maybe, that, but it's also the city. The city. Fine. Do, You're not the Warriors and not you, the Niners. If you, are a, if you are a local, if you are homegrown like we are, you do not look at San Francisco the way you used to. And maybe that's just us getting up there. Get, you know, that's the way people, as you get older, talk. Well, it ain't like it used to be. Maybe it's a little bit of that. Maybe the, uh, the political side of this has bled into us a little bit. Every one of our friends and family members who live in a different state. What the hell's going on out there in San Francisco? I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a little bit of all of those things. But... We've got an inferiority complex, this idea that, well, the Giants and San Francisco, we're not one of the big boys. And even, you know, Nahigian before our show, how the hell are the Giants going to pitch Shohei Otani if the Dodgers are sitting next to him? How can they compete? We never used to think that way. What do you mean, how can we compete? What do you mean by that? Well, the proof is in the pudding. And in the industry, I don't think so. The Dodgers haven't signed any major free agents. They've traded for them. Right. Yeah, Freeman, okay. And, and, And Correa said yes. So this idea that the Giants, like in the baseball industry, they do not view the Giants the way their own fan base does. Agents do not go, oh, that's cute. The the Giants are over there in little little poor San Francisco. We'll use them to drive up my price to the Dodgers. That's not how the industry looks at it. That's not how the players look at it. That's how we look at it. And I want to know where that came from. Well, it came from repeated failures in terms of landing the big fish. And you can can categorize it however you want to categorize it. And you can say that, Carlos Correa said yes, but Carlos Correa doesn't play for the Giants, and that's just a fact. And you can look at Kevin Gosman, who the Giants could have signed. He was here, and they chose not to, and he's gone on to be a great pitcher. And you'd love to have him as a number two. But that's not a... But but the point is, and this is why you're looking at repeated failures, Aaron Judge and Farhan has come out and said he never thought that they had a chance to sign Aaron Judge. Well, yeah, you were right, and you didn't sign Aaron Judge. And 
Giancarlo Stanton before that, which was, I believe, pre-Farhan. That was pre-Farhan, yeah. And Bryce Harper and all the rest, as you've gone through, this regime has not shown <laughs> the ability to sign any player to a long-term deal. And you can look at Carlos Correa and say, well, they would have, and they had pen to paper almost, and then they backed out because of the of the, the physical and all the rest of it. And that's true, but it's also true that Farhan Zaidi has never signed anybody to longer than a three-year deal of any real heft. So I think that's part where the inferiority complex comes from. The other piece of it is the San Francisco piece. I moved to this city in 1994, Mm -hmm. 95, and the city that I knew then is completely different than the city I know now. And the city I know now is far better in many ways. For example... I worked at a place in Mission Bay when the stadium wasn't there yet. There was no Oracle Park. There was no Pac Bell Park. And that place was downright scary. You would go down there as a place really to hide bodies. <laughs> if you were a murderer, <laughs> that's where you would go to hide the body. Yeah. Down there. And this is, you know, before you even cross the Third Street Bridge, there's all those warehouses. It's where you went to all the raves and all the rest of it. And obviously that area has been developed and now it's vibrant with restaurants and all the rest of it. But downtown has become a lot more soulless than it was 30 years ago when I lived on 42nd and Clement and I would take the 38 Geary to a job I had at KCBS. I was a production assistant making about eight bucks an hour or whatever I was making. You would get off the bus in Embarcadero. It was thriving. Downtown was happening. There was action. And now fewer people work here. Fewer people want to live here. Rents are still high. Everything's extremely expensive. This city, the downtown portion of this city, in my opinion, has lost its way in many different aspects. Do we, legit question, do we overrate the importance of said city proper downtown? Because here we are with an inferiority complex going up against L.A., which has never had a cool downtown Ever, ever. No, but and their I, downtown is way better than it was when I lived there absolutely. in 1990. And still nowhere near this one. Right. Just in terms of downtown. In other words, what you like about L.A., and I think that Shohei loves the beach, but the beach is 20 minutes away. I think a lot of these downtowns, you get in your car for 20 minutes, something cool pretty happens. That That's 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 here. That's I mean, right. if you want downtown, I'd argue go to the Padres. Sure. And by the way, what do they talk about in San Diego politically? Oh, my gosh. The freaking homeless problem is out of control. Well, it's nowhere near as bad as it is here. Mm, And They would argue with you. Well, and you could look at free agents. Was it Seiya Suzuki? Yes. That basically said, I don't want to go there because of the homeless problem. Well, it wasn't because of the homeless problem. It It was was the, the filth. And the the, the yeah, crime. His, his wife was worried about the urban side of San Francisco, and I actually think that you've pointed out one of the things that's led to the complex we currently have. I think it's a one-two punch, maybe even a third one, if you will. I, I think we get a little bit too broad brush strokes with the whole the Giants always finish in second place. Aaron Judge leaving the Yankees. That's a very different pursuit yeah, than say yeah. Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper is one where I'm like, you could have had him. You you could have had him. Like, he was ready, and you just got outbid. You can criticize that one. Stanton wasn't coming. Judge wasn't leaving the Yankees. Correa said yes, and I'm blanking on anybody else who's approached a $300 million offer. Um, you know, they didn't get Soto. That was a trade um, that, that, that the Padres made. Um, I, I think that the, the, there's the – they haven't landed that fish. There's the comments by Seiya Suzuki – um, and his family about the, the nature of San Francisco. And Farhan's comment that he addressed on this show and said he feels it was taken contextually incorrect, but right. his comments that they've had a hard time sometimes bringing certain people to the Bay Area because we've even seen players who don't even want to come here for their three-game series. And, and sure, baseball's like that. Yeah, there are guys who grew up in Alabama, and they don't want to come here. I, I get that. Yeah, and that's part of it. But Shohei's not one of them dudes. Exactly. And I wonder if he's here for 10 weeks, if he gets a better idea of the things that are the reality of San Francisco as opposed to the mythology of San Francisco in terms yeah. of, you know, like you say, you come here for three days, you don't really get to see the best of any city 
over three days, and the prevailing negativity that you might have in your mind would carry more weight if you didn't live here. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I, I think you can go to any big city in America and find all kinds of dirty stuff and homeless and, and problems, just issues. I don't know if that speaks to someone who's about to make half a billion dollars. He can go live wherever he wants and uh, and be all tucked away if that's what he really wants.